Hey, welcome back to What's in the Box. Today we're going to continue our Friday the 13th kick and review Friday the 13th Jason Voorhees, the final chapter figure from NECA. Um, I have expressed my love for the Friday the 13th uh, franchise each time I review one of these figures. And I've dang near wore this shirt every time. <laughs> I don't have too many uh, specific shirts uh, for each Friday. That would be a lot of shirts. Uh, but um, I do enjoy the franchise. And I've said before, and I'll say it again, the first four are very solid movies. The fifth is sort of so-so. Six and seven, great again. Eight, nine, and ten kind of rough <laughs> uh, but I look forward to uh, getting this one out of the box and taking a look at it with you guys um, I do enjoy this particular one Tom Savini who did the effects in the first film comes back to do the effects in this one and to essentially end the franchise sure Tom sure <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll take a look at it right now. All right, so here we have stuntman and actor Ted White's Jason Voorhees. Uh, he was particularly known to me anyway as, as one of the guys that did the whole burst through the door uh, movement. Uh, supernaturally, the door comes flying apart. Uh, they repeated this in part five, even though it didn't quite make sense. He has quite a few accessories. Uh, the most notable is Pamela Voorhees' tombstone, which has a, a great paint job on it. Uh, it, ha it has that very granite look to it. All the details are, are nicely done, and uh, no complaints there. It is hollow. Uh, but it has a, a cork kind of thing holding the bottom in there. Sets just fine. Uh, we get two heads. We'll get to those in a minute. And then we get a second op uh, gripping hand, probably for one of the other uh, weapons here. Overall, like most of these uh, Voorhees figures, he looks pretty great. Uh, Standard green shirt, brown pants, dark brown boots, all with the typical uh, washes that uh, NECA does. His pants do does have some highlights paint-wise. Um, hands are quite dirty, quite uh, nasty brown wash, long fingernails as he had in the film. Uh, hockey mask-wise done pretty well uh, it's more of a solid color than some of the others have been uh, but they do get that uh, middle chevron in half like it is in the film we can take a look at his face real quick as always be gentle with those straps and there we have probably one of Jason's ugliest looks in human form uh, it's, it's captured quite well. Still very, very dark wash. I would have liked them to lighten up on that a little bit. They captured the face well, although uh, the jawline looks a little more exaggerated than it should. But still pretty decent. We'll slip that back on his head. We don't want to look at that ugly mug too long, do we? And then we'll turn to what I'm assuming is a battle damaged head that's awesome okay I did not expect this the the strap for the hockey was uh, covering it up but they did actually include a head that uh, would have the machete or um, meat cleaver in it from when he falls on it I believe it's the meat cleaver that he gets in the side of his head so here we do have the meat cleaver, and you can place this right in the side of his head as it appeared in the film, and he falls down 
and cuts his poor little noggin in half. That is well done, although this particular head is even darker than that one, and I don't uh, really care for it that much as far as paint goes. But I do like they included that, and that you're able to add the machete to the side of the head. Moving on to his weapons, we have a bone saw. I believe he starts the film out by killing uh, one of the nurses or medical technicians in the hospital with this particular bone saw. Saws into their neck, if I remember correctly. Uh, we get a corkscrew. I want to say... Is it Crispin Glover or is that from another film? I can't quite remember. I'll just say it was Crispin Glover that takes the the corkscrew to to the hand. But um, don't quote me. Sometimes it's hard to keep up with who died and what. Of course, the meat cleaver, which I've already shown you, a little sticky from the tape. Uh, your basic kitchen knife, nice and bloody. Of course... An axe. I believe he uses this when Jason, uh, sorry, not Jason, but uh, Tommy and his sisters held up in the room and he chops the door down. It's done well. Nice brown handle. Uh, nice silver head on that. And then we have Jason's classic machete. The paint on this is a little odd. Uh, they decided that all of Jason's <laughs> machete would be blood red except for the tip. That makes a lot of sense, but okay, the, I don't really care for the paint on that particular part of it. But yeah, uh, pretty solid entry in into the figures. Again, far as nitpicks go, with these Jason figures, NECA does just too dark of a wash. Uh, they've done that on a, one of their Freddy figures as well. Other than that, the way they painted the, the machete, not too much outside of that. Uh, a pretty solid figure. I love the tombstone. I do love the accessories, especially the corkscrew and the bone saw. And you can't ask for much more as far as the look of the figure. It, it captures the film pretty well. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you like the review, you like the figure, go out and pick it up. Again, those couple little nitpicks. But if you're uh, Friday the 13th completist like me, You've got to have the part for Jason. Thanks for uh, watching, and we'll see you next time.